If you have employees that use their personal funds for programmatic expenses or for other organizational expenses, then this video is going to be for you because we're going to be talking through how to manage employee reimbursements and QuickBooks Online. So keep watching. Now it's not uncommon that employees use their personal funds for organizational expenses. However, before we even get into the nitty gritty on how to manage said expenses, we really need to lay down some ground rules on some of the basics and fundamental things that you need to have in place. And that first one is starting with a reimbursement policy. And typically this is coupled with expense management. Now at the very base level, your reimbursement policy needs to cover four things. That first thing being, what are actual qualified expenses? Are employees allowed to be reimbursed for their travel using Uber or do they have to use Lyft, right? Are they able to submit, you know, for reimbursement for certain meal expenses? Is there a threshold? Like what qualifies a reimbursable expense? That's the first thing that your policy needs to cover. The second thing it needs to cover is what is the threshold for approval? Some organizations will say, you know, if it's below $25, then you don't need to be approved for that. You, you can go and spend it. However, if it's above $25 or $50, right, you have to get approval. Now, this is going to be dependent on the organization, its size, right, the nature of these types of expenses that employees are spending on. So that you need to determine in-house, but at the very least, your reimbursement policy does need to indicate if there's a threshold for approval and what that threshold is. The third thing it needs to include, what is the process for submission, right? So if there's a threshold for approval, what does that approval process look like, right? And then also when they are submitting expenses for reimbursement, what does the submission process look like, right? Is there a certain form they have to fill out? What do they have to include on the form? What needs to be included with the form, right? Because at the very least, you should be requiring a receipt to support the expense, right? You know, in some cases, if it was an expense that needed approval, then when they're submitting for reimbursement, that should, the approval should be included, right? And so what is that process, right? And hopefully it's electronic for the most part, but what is that process? The policy needs to include that. And then lastly, you also need to include what happens when that process is not followed, right? We have some organizations that say you have two weeks, for example, to submit for reimbursement. Then after that, you may not be reimbursed, right? And so you need to have a process, well, you need to document rather what happens when someone doesn't follow the process, when you know they submit for reimbursement and it falls outside of the deadline. Make it, because you want to make sure that employees are aware fully of what the policy is so that there is no confusion when things are not followed or when you have to, you know, assess a penalty or something like that. Or we even get into the nitty gritty, make sure you have an, ex an employee reimbursement policy. Now let's move on to how you're actually tracking or managing these expenses, right? So it is my recommendation that you should be using an expense management platform tool app whatever you want to call it, but you should be using one, right? You want to make it easy for employees to be able to track their expenses, to upload receipts, to indicate the nature. You want to make it easy because when it is not, the process can become cumbersome and then people don't follow it and then it becomes a bookkeeping nightmare. So let's not have that happen. So some examples of some tools that we are familiar with that our clients use are um, Expensify, Auto Entry, and Neat. And that's Neat with an N as in Nancy. So those are three different tools that you can check out depending on your organization's needs. The important thing to remember here is that it needs to integrate with your accounting system, which in this case, we're talking about QuickBooks Online. And a special mention for a tool would be your payroll platform. So. A lot of our clients use Gusto, so we're gonna use Gusto for this example. Gusto actually allows employees to um, submit you know, their receipts for reimbursement. They're able to indicate what it was for. They're able to upload the documentation. And so you, know, you might wanna check out and see if, uh, if you already have a payroll provider, right? You might wanna check out and see if they have some type of tool or platform that you can use so you don't have to add an additional app or tool to your tech stack. Um, so that's just a special mention. But make sure that for whatever tracking 
tool that you're going to use that it integrates with your accounting system because it makes it easy for those expenses to flow through and for us right on the other end who's doing the bookkeeping and accounting to know what these expenses are for to make sure that it's backed up by supporting documentation right and that it's actually been approved now when you're trying to think about which tool you even need to be using you want to take into consideration right the size of your organization the number of employees that are going to be spending and will need reimbursement the volume of those transactions right because that will determine is it worth it to have a tool and if it is worth it you know how much you need, even need to be spending on this tool but at the very least you want to make sure that you have a process in place for how these things get captured and then uploaded or imported rather into your accounting system now let's get into how this actually gets managed in QuickBooks online so for the sake of this conversation you're using a tool and these expenses are getting imported into QuickBooks online right so that means they're showing up in the bank feed now here's the thing I've seen this captured in two ways and I have a preferred way that I'm going to mention the first way is these expenses come through and you know organizations are just lumping them into a reimbursable expenses line I don't care for that way because we have no clue then what those expenses were and technically in some ways it leaves too much to the imagination especially if this amount ends up being significant in relation to the size of the organization right now the second way that I've seen this manage, which is the way that we manage it here is that those expenses are actually categorized to the line that it was used for so for example if an employee was reimbursed for a, um, a travel expense it goes to the travel line if they were reimbursed let's say because they put up money for I don't know let's say for lack of a term you know software right fundraising software then it needs to go to that appropriate line or dues and memberships like I'm trying to think of some commonly reimbursed expenses travel tends to be the main one I would not just lump it to a reimbursable expense line one because then when you're budgeting or you're reviewing your expenses and you want to know well how much should we actually spend on travel like how much should we be allocating in that line if you just have all of these expenses sitting re in reimbursable expenses you're not really sure how much you actually spent on travel because you're not taking to, into account those expenses that employees paid out of pocket and then you reimburse them for. That's a no-go. We don't want that. We want to be as accurate as possible and we don't want these vague right accounts sitting on your income statement or your statement of activities and you're confused or it requires so much legwork to actually figure out what is actually sitting in that account. So now that you know my preferred way to manage these in QuickBooks Online, I'm also going to sound the alarm on my thoughts around employees using their personal funds for organization expenses. Here's the thing, sometimes you can't avoid it. And in those cases, that's okay, especially you gotta make sure you have a policy around that though, right? It has to be something that they are even able to do. You don't want them doing it and then hoping that they're going to be reimbursed. If you see that this is becoming common, if you know that there are going to be a lot of expenses that employees are are having to pay for, or if you know that purchasing is a large part of the nature of your organization, then you need to think about corporate cards, right? So I'm going to use um, a client for an example. We have a client who runs a camp program, and during the school year, it's an after school program, but the camp staff are able to make all sorts of purchases, whether it's supplies, whether it's food, they put on events and things like that. And as such, all of those events running through corporate is just very difficult. It, it started to become cumbersome when there was just one person that was a part of the management team having to purchase or make these purchases for multiple different camp locations because I should put that out there too these are multiple different camp locations what we implemented was a tool called Brex Brex is not my preferred tool Divi is my preferred tool but for the sake of this conversation they do the same thing they they're an expense management tool but through this expense management tool you also get corporate cards and you can get multiple especially again if you have a, if you're going to have multiple you know program staff that are going to be making purchases the upside to this is that one employees are not using their personal funds these are the organization's funds that are being used all of these expenses are being tracked through the tool right so through Brex or through Divi we can clearly log in see all of the expenses see who's spending on the card how much if there's 
anything that is out of the ordinary, right? If there's anything that seems significant or large, we're able to get the statement, we're able to reconcile it, and we're able to, you know, on a periodic basis, audit these, right? And so this is my preferred way because then the organization retains control, right? You can set limits, you know, in some of the tools you can actually submit for approval within the system. It helps to streamline the process so that you're not having to manage all of this paperwork and sending emails. Like we want it to be simple. We want it to be simple. And again, these also are tools that integrate with QuickBooks. And because they're cards, you can actually link the card, right? So then we're reconciling. So it also adds an additional layer of control. And so I would implore you to think about, before you even get to the point of where you're like managing these employee reimbursements, you need to think about whether or not your organization should be managing corporate cards so that you're not even getting to the point of where employees need to have to be reimbursed by the organization. I know that we talked, the, the premise, of this video was how do you manage employee reimbursements in QuickBooks Online. And while we talked about that, really we need to be having a larger conversation around whether that even should be a thing, right? We know sometimes it's unavoidable, but sometimes depending on the size of your organization, and again, if you're going to be having multiple people purchasing, it can get chaotic. So in that case, you might want to think about corporate cards. And I just gave you two options to think about as it relates to those corporate cards, and that was Brex, B-R-E-X, and Divi, D-I-V-V-Y. I hope that this was helpful. All in all you need to make sure that you have a policy you need to make sure that, that policy is communicated to employees and you need to just overall assess right your organization's need for this and whether or not you need to go the corporate card route for our final 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 point or one the point that i want to drive home is that whatever you choose whatever way you go it needs to integrate with QuickBooks Online or whatever accounting system you use. I say QuickBooks Online because that's what we use because it helps to streamline the accounting process and it helps to give visibility into what's happening as it relates to the organization's expenses. Now, I hope that this was helpful. If you want me to do a video on any of these tools specifically or maybe a versus video like we've done in the past on two tools, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.